How's it going, YouTube? We are back with the final part, part three of the NHL trade deadline recap. Uh, the Montreal Canadiens add some um, depth to their defensive core with Eric Gustafson. The Flyers get a 2022 seventh rounder in return. Um, I think Gustafson will end up playing a top six role if he plays. If not, he'll probably be a, a healthy scratch and um, come off of the bench per injury. Uh, I believe he's a two-way defender, so he can uh, play both sides of the ice pretty well. And um, nice depth piece for the Montreal Canadiens to get in terms to um, put themselves in a position to make a little run. Um, I guess this season was the year of three team trades because uh, the Golden Knights ended up getting from San Jose, uh, Nick DeSimone, and from Chicago, Matthias Landmark, and a 2022 fifth. Um, I don't know too much about DeSimone, so you guys will have to let me know. But Matthias Landmark is a sniper who, um, who can get you some goals on the power play and a 2022 fifth. Um, late round picks tend to turn into you know depth guys or um possible bottom six kind of penalty killers and stuff like that but you never know um there's always those diamonds in the rough um vegas sends a 2022 fifth to san jose and then sends a 2021 second and a 2022 third to the blackhawks in return for their players um you know vegas is a good team they're one of the best in the league right now um they're gonna go for a cup run, they're loading up, and uh, there's no reason why they shouldn't make it to, um, shouldn't make it pretty deep. Um, I think they're really good. I think the problem is they're probably gonna have to run into the Avalanche at some point, and I think the Avalanche right now are a better team, or a more dangerous team than, um, than the Golden Knights. Um, the Maple Leafs get Ben Hutton uh, from the Ducks in exchange for a 2022 fifth rounder. Uh, ben Hutton's, uh, you know, he's a depth piece as well, bottom six kind of guy. Um, come off of the bench as a healthy scratch, put some points up. Um, I would say he's a two-way defender. Uh, when he was a king, he played a, he got some points here and there. Um, not a shutdown guy, that's for sure. But small, you, know, you move the puck. Maple Leafs want the depth, and they're getting depth, and that's for sure. And then the probably the biggest trade on the board here. Um, Red Wings get Richard Panic, Jacob Rana. 2021 first and a 2022 second in exchange for Anthony Manta and man is that a trade um I like Jacob Verena a lot I think he's a young um up-and-coming sniper I think he's gonna score a lot of goals in his career so um and to get a first with him as well uh just icing on the cake man that's a great great trade for for Detroit um Richard Panic's a nice third fourth line piece as well but he is Jacob Verena is the big big piece of the puzzle here for that trade and they get um, a couple of high draft picks in the in the this draft and next draft as well. Um, the Capitals get Anthony Manta, power forward winger. Um, Going to go hard on the forecheck, big presence in front of the net, uh, good power play guy, probably going to be a penalty killer as well. So, I mean, both sides get, like, elite packages in return. Um, Anthony Manta hasn't hit really the elite level, but it's still there for sure. For sure it's still there. So, I mean... I think that's a big trade, and I, and I like it for both teams, to be honest. Uh, Carolina gets Yanni Hockenpah and a 2022 sixth in exchange for Hayden Fleury. Um, I'm a big believer in Hayden Fleury. I think Hayden Fleury is going to be a, a nice top four defender um, for any team, really. Uh, he just kind of ran into a position where Carolina has too many defensemen, too many good defensemen for him to crack the lineup. Um, they get Yanni Hockenpah, who's a, like an offensive defenseman that can come off of the bench because he won't. If, if Hayden Fleury couldn't crack that lineup, Hawk and Paul won't crack that lineup either. Um, the Ducks get Hayden Fleury in return. They send a sixth over there as well, and they get themselves a nice little piece that will probably make the NHL roster right now. Uh, a couple of minor trades to round off the uh, the deadline. Madison Bowie got sent to um, the Black Hot, or sorry, Madison Bowie got sent to the Canucks in exchange for a 2021 fourth rounder. Um, Madison Bowie is a nice up and coming defenseman. We haven't seen him hit the peak yet. But I think he still does have some top four potential. They go and they get him for a fairly cheap price, a fourth rounder. And then they send Jordy Ben to the Jets to clear the roster space for him so he can play in the NHL in exchange for a 2021 sixth. So they lose a fourth, they get a sixth, and then they get Bowie as well. So um, pretty good set of trades there for the Canucks. Um, the Jets get that depth. Like I said, every team that wants to make a playoff run, they add depth to their team. Um, injuries happen, and you need those guys to be ready to go. Um, the Capitals got Michael Raffo uh, in exchange for a 2021 fifth from the Flyers. Um, Raffo's kind of a gritty guy. 
you know, he's gonna get into some fights, he's gonna he's gonna check, he's gonna, you know, the capital seem to be going with the, the big bodies this year. The tight checking guys like Manta, like Raffle, the grinders. Um obviously they have Tom Wilson already who's a menace to society in the NHL. So they just want big boys to play in that bottom six and I, I'm all with that. Um, big boy hockey has kind of gone away since everybody's gotten smaller and faster and more focused on um, getting points. But um, that art has not gone completely as uh, the Capitals are a pretty good team and they have a lot of big boys on their team. And finally, to round it off, um, Eric Goodbranson got traded to the Predators in exchange for Brandon Fort Fortuno Fortunato and a 2023 seventh. Uh, as I said before, the Senators are just tearing apart that defensive core. They're just leaving it to um, Branstrom and uh, Thomas Shabbat. Um, they're not a good team. The Predators are not a good team, so this deal doesn't really make any sense for me either. It's just um, swapping people and hoping for the best in the future, I guess. But that's going to do it for part three of the deadline. Leave a like if you enjoyed all three parts. Subscribe, comment what deal was the biggest on the trade deadline, and I'll see you guys next time.